Welcome, it's indisputable. I'm your host, Rashad Richard, good to be with you. We got a lot of show today. In the bullpen, my debate segment, we have Captain Kevin Mac McGovern, United States Navy, retired. Congressional candidate in Florida, wants to talk about critical race theory and maybe Russia, Ukraine. Should be an interesting debate. Also breaking down news of the day, none other than comedian, actor, Rebel HQ contributor, Mr. Alonzo Bowden should be a really, really great show. Top, top story of the day, Congressman Cawthorn says he was invited to an orgy and cocaine party by Republicans in leadership, okay? Now he said this, all right, here's the video. And I look at all these people, a lot of them that I, you know, I've looked up to through my life, I've always paid attention to politics, guys that, you know, it, then all of a sudden you get invited to, like, well, hey, we're gonna have kind of a, a, a sexual get together at one of our homes, you should come. And I'm like, what, what, what did you just ask me to come to? Yeah. Uh, and then you realize they're asking you to come to an orgy. Yeah. Uh, or, or the fact that you know there's some of the people that are leading on the movement to try and remove, you know, addiction in our country, and then you watch them do you know a key bump of cocaine right in front of you, and it's like wow, this is this is wild. And then there's also kind of the whole espionage aspect of what goes on in Washington. Of you know, so many people trade in secrets, and there, there's a currency to secrets, and yeah. so. Uh, it, it's wild, and then you know there's members of the of the the media, the journalists who kind of will keep nasty stories about you or about other people on a shelf, and then if you're about to kind of speak out against something they don't want you to, they'll come out and say, well, we're about to drop the story of when you know 17 years ago you did X, Y, and Z, and you don't want us to drop that story, do you? So we're, we're going to bully you back into this position. Was the story about you doing cocaine and being in an orgy 17 years ago? Because that's the only way this is interesting. So let me get let me get the record straight here. So Congressman Cawthorn says, okay, you know, Republicans invited me to an orgy, and and you know they do cocaine in front of you. So that means, Congressman, that you went to the old man orgy. And when you went to the old man orgy. What shocked you was the fact they were doing cocaine. Now, I don't mean to be brutal here, and I'm not trying to be insensitive. But the congressman is paralyzed from the waist down. So are you there for the orgy, sir, or are you there for the cocaine? He released a statement. Let's put the statement up. Statement from Congressman Madison Cawthorn. Corruption and unethical activities exist in Washington. It's an, now watch this, indisputable fact. If you don't think that's true, you've not witnessed the swamp. And then it goes on to say, my comments on a recent podcast appearance calling out corruption have been used by the left and the media to disparage my Republican colleagues and falsely insinuate their involvement in illicit activities. Okay, you see, we're all adults here, Congressman. That was you who did that. You said this, the question was specific to your colleagues. You answered it, it is not the fault of the media for repeating what you said. And that's the reason I played the video. Because I wanted people to hear what you said. Now, I actually think Congressman Cawthorn is telling the truth. I think he's saying exactly what he was invited to. I believe he's telling the truth. I think this has happened to him, all right? Now he's trying to spin it as if somehow those in the media decided to take his statement out of context. No, sir, you did that to yourself. Now, there are others coming to his defense. Uh, Roger Stone said, hey, man, the man is telling the truth. Uh, it is a swamp. Uh, and Roger Stone would know, okay? All right, my dear brother, what are your thoughts on this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to open with a laugh, but but this is comical on, on so many levels. The funniest thing to me is him say trying to blame the left. It's like, you've been invited to a cocaine orgy and, and you're blaming the left. Trust me, 
The Democrats didn't invite you to their cocaine orgy. Exactly. Okay, you, you went <laughs> that's, to the right that's a wing. a different one, right. Cocaine, exactly, exactly. You know, back in the 90s, I used to do um, many USO shows. And the person who was the head of the USO said that uh, Washington DC and politicians, she said, they're just ugly movie stars. She said, they're like, it's like the same kind of parties and the same stuff that goes on in Hollywood. It's just a different kind of thing, which this makes that more believable. Mm. Um, I, you know, again, the funniest thing to me is him trying to somehow blame this on the left and the Democrats because he got in trouble yeah. for telling the truth. Yeah. You, you're right. He told the truth. He got in trouble. Probably some senior Republicans or some other staff said, "Hey, shut your mouth." You know, the other freshman Congress people are upset because now they won't get invited to the exactly. cocaine orgy. They're like, you ruined it. You ruined it for all of us. Now we can't go to the cocaine orgy until our second term. <laughs> we wanted to go to summer's coming and there's gonna be some nice backyard cocaine orgies and we can't go because of you. Keep your mouth shut. Um, to say that there is, what did he say? Corruption and unethical activities in Washington, really? Really? No one would have guessed that. And listen, when Roger Stone is speaking up for you, you're you're in serious trouble. You, when, you know, <laughs> when, when yeah. that's your friend, it's like, hey, well, Roger Stone's backing me up. Oh, you mean the guy who would be in jail except that Trump pardoned him? That guy is your backup to your story. Yeah. Uh, this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you, Rashad. You know what the problem is with this and so many of these stories. This is why it's hard to do comedy because I have to top this. All right, my job <laughs> right. <laughs> is to top this, okay? This guy is, a, and another thing, and I'm speaking from recovery, okay? You don't do a kilo of cocaine at the party. That's 2.2 pounds. What kind of party? Stop it. If, yeah. if, you're, if you're making up a cocaine story, cut back. You do a gram, maybe an ounce. You didn't do 2.2 pounds of cocaine at the party and then perform at an orgy. It, it just doesn't work that way. I'm not going to get into the science of it, but trust me. <laughs> you know, here's what's interesting also the fact that out of everything he can be uh, upset about or outraged about, or have righteous indignation about, he's talking about orgies and cocaine. He's not outraged by the actual policies that are adversarial to people in America, the policies that have led to the death of countless citizens. Uh, from COVID-19 policies to healthcare policies and also discriminatory policies that continue to be perpetuated and they permeate the culture of Washington. He's not upset about any of that. He's not upset about Marjorie Taylor Greene being a keynote speaker at a white supremacist rally. He's not upset about those things. That's not corruption to him, but the cocaine party was. All right. Can I say one yeah. more thing regarding this party? And, and people aren't gonna like this, but it's true. Listen, and, and this relates to what you're saying. If you're doing your job, America doesn't care, okay? Yeah. Remember Bill Clinton. Now, Bill Clinton had a sex scandal and he tried to bring him down. And what did America say? He balanced the budget. <laughs> <laughs> he balanced the budget. Listen, we, we're okay with this guy. We, we don't exactly approve, but he balanced the budget. Do your job and we will overlook your cocaine orgy. Just just up the other parts of the swamp. Yeah, well, I don't give uh, Bill Clinton a pass for other reasons, but that's a different thing. I understand that. Okay, but. all right. <laughs>
And when I say friend, she has been my friend for years, her and her husband, Sydney. I've had real conversations with Monique. Some of them have been tough. But when I tell you that Monique is one of the most authentic people you will ever meet in your natural life, you can take that to the bank. Her husband, the same way. And I said, <clears throat> before I got to TYT on my radio show, I've featured Monique on my show. I even had Monique come and speak in front of a group of college students at the university I taught at. Monique was wronged by others. Now here's what happened with Lee Daniels. Depending on the narrative you choose to believe, when Monique won her major award, she left out thanking Mr. Lee Daniels. Well, Mr. Lee Daniels was very upset about this. They were best friends at the time. Mr. Lee Daniels thought he made Monique. And how dare Monique not share, I thank you, Lee Daniels. That was an oversight. It happened, it is what it is. But according to the narrative, Mr. Lee Daniels then engaged in a significant and sophisticated campaign against Monique. Planning rumors that she was difficult to work with. So much so that Tyler Perry was asked the question about Monique being difficult. An assumption was made, Tyler Perry did not correct the record. And it cemented that Monique could not be worked with because Tyler Perry did not oppose the narrative. Well, in a conversation between Monique, Tyler Perry, and her husband, Sydney, Tyler Perry admitted the audio is now available. Tyler Perry admitted that Monique was never hard to work with and that he would set the record straight. And he was basically not willing to do so at that time because he had movies that needed a positive spin. He was unwilling to get involved and tell the truth. All right, that gives you some background. Let me give you some more context to this. Monique and Lee Daniels. They are letting bygones be bygones. For years, the pair were at odds after Monique Fitch for accused director Daniel 62 and others of blackballing her for not promoting their 2009 film Precious during award season. On Friday evening, the duo publicly buried the hatchet in the middle of a comedy show in Staten Island, New York. As seen in video footage shared on Twitter, the actress was on stage performing as part of her Monique and Friends April Fool's Day with the Queen of Comedy event when she brought the director out on stage. I'm gonna give you some more personal context here. A few years ago, I brought Monique to speak about the ups and downs, the ebb and flow of leadership. This was my leadership studies class. I had a lot of PhD students and community members who came to this open discussion. Here's a part of it. Were there feelings that I hurt? Yes, and I had to go back and say, listen, at the time I was tripping, uh -huh. let me apologize. You know, my, my friends right now in my life, I had to apologize to them uh -huh. because I wasn't the greatest friend when fame hit. She said, I wasn't the greatest friend when fame hit. Lee Daniels is saying that today, that he was not the greatest friend to her. And in his commentary, he's alluding to his fame as part of the reason they fell out. Monique learned that lesson some years ago, but she still had to go through that learning process and apologize to the friends that she had offended. The question I posed to her in front of that live group of students and community members was, have you done things wrong to your friends? Do you owe some people an apology? After that discussion, Monique did something quite amazing. She did not want any camera to be on when she did this. Everybody wanted to talk to Monique, everybody wanted a picture. They wanted to say hello to her. She was on a tight schedule. She said, no, I'm gonna stay here and talk to everybody. Turn the cameras off. She said, I want all of my elders to come to the front. She spent three hours there hugging and talking to each elder. And then the students and then everyone else. She spent three hours, pictures galore, conversations galore. People were crying, getting advice, telling her how much they are rooting for her. I had never seen anything like this. And I've interviewed my fair share of celebrities, never seen anything like that before. I am glad this is happening, but it goes back 
to our male dominated societal structures because in order for Monique to come back, a man has to validate her, isn't that something? A man of status has to say, you are now safe. She's been saying for years, I was not wrong with Lee Daniels. Okay, there's more. He said, I'm sorry for hurting you in any way that I did. Daniel said to Monique while standing before the audience, she was my best friend, my best friend, my best friend. Y'all think that Precious was just, that was God working through both of us. Daniels then continued, and we're going to F and do it again, referring to the upcoming horror film Demon House, in which Monique has been tapped to star, replacing Spencer per deadline. After dancing with one another on stage, both Monique and Daniels hugged it out, each saying I love you to the other. Now let this story go viral like Will Smith. Being an immature you know what and slapping Chris Rock. Let this story, put up the picture. See, that was an authentic reunion between two people who damn near hated each other. All right, my brother, what are your thoughts on this? You're a comedian, I know you know Monique. I'm sure you have had your opinion about it as well. I know Monique and I'll tell you, I know her in passing. In other words, we've crossed paths in the business working um, super talented, super funny. Like you said, genuine. What we talked about, what we comedians talked about, the thing about Monique when they were trying to, I'm gonna say dismiss her, right? Where it was like, she's the only person with an Oscar working at comedy clubs. You know mm. what I mean? Like there's kind of That's a, a good hierarchy. Point hierarchy in the business and when you win and, and and believe me, I love comedy clubs. All comics love comedy clubs. The most famous drop in and do you know work on their act or something. But to actually be booked in clubs while you're holding an Oscar always seemed kind of, hmm, there's something going on there. You know what I'll say? I am happy about this reunion. Good, good for both of them. Um, I can't speak, you're speaking from a point of knowing her personally and being friends with her, which is more of an insight than I have. I see Two talented people, two artists, two creators who have gotten past their differences to go back and and continue in their art. Um, I'm happy she got the apology. It shows a level of respect that she deserves. You know, on the business side of Hollywood, Hollywood's business, right? So, so Mm -hmm. back to making movies, back to making money, um, getting on Netflix. Maybe that will. They'll they'll give her the respect she deserved there because she also had a problem with them. And you know, I wish her I wish her and he the absolute best in this reconciliation. Regarding what you're saying, comparing this to the Chris Rock being slapped by Will Smith, unfortunately, people prefer scandal. Yeah, you know, so so that story will remain bigger because of the scandal involved, and and that's. That's just the nature of uh, you know news and the media and gossip and everything else. It, it's more of a story. But this is big and and you know great for her and and go do this movie and kill it and yep. show them the the actor you are and continue your career from there. And you know I I hope I I hope I never cross paths with Monique in a comedy club. She's got an Oscar. She has no business working anywhere <laughs> well they said. let me in. If they let me in, it's like Monique, you're too good to be here. Why are you here? Now you and your Oscar, go go work somewhere else. <laughs> good stuff, brother. Well said too. Very well said. I got an update. I have an update to a story. Do you remember uh, the hotel clerk? Uh, this was in Florida. Ends up calling the police because there's a there's a racist guest, right? All right. Kicks out the racist guest, racist guest comes back, ends up assaulting, attacking, beating up the hotel clerk. The cops arrest the hotel clerk and take the racist guy who assaulted the hotel clerk, gave him a courtesy ride to a friend's house. Let me go to the video, Best Western here, okay? All right, This is the camera footage, you see the attack, it is clear who the aggressor is. Now the aggressor got his ass kicked and he was apprehended.
another guest comes to help the hotel clerk. Because he is able to determine the hotel clerk is being attacked. The hotel clerk is not the criminal, okay? And then here comes Barney Fife. The police enter and they decide to physically assault the hotel clerk. This is now his second physical assault and they arrest him. They put him in a squad car. They know everything that's going on. The hotel clerk is telling them, please look at the video. All you gotta do is look at the video. They will not listen. They decide to then ignore it, put him in a squad car and they take him to county jail. Okay, the man who attacked him got a ride once again to his friend's house. They called it a courtesy ride. All right, let's put up a mugshot of the hotel clerk. The hotel clerk got a mugshot out of this deal. Shameful. Okay. Now the attorney representing Mr. Ray Shell that you see there, put in a request to see the new video footage from the officers. Here it is. Tonight, police body camera video reveals a shocking new angle of a hotel brawl in Florida. The video released by the Fort Lauderdale Police Department shows officers yelling and pushing a black hotel employee before arresting him. In the incident report obtained by NBC News, when police responded to the scene, Rashal was hostile and refused to back up. The officer reporting he pushed Rashal back before Rashal, quote, placed his hands on my upper torso and pushed me. It does not appear Rashal pushed the officer from the footage reviewed by NBC News. And you didn't help back up, back up. In a statement, the Fort Lauderdale Police Department said it's conducting a review of the incident. Conducting a review? Lock his ass up. The cop needs to go to jail and the guy who physically assaulted the hotel clerk. All right, once again, put up his mugshot. He's the only guy that got a mugshot here. Now this is shameful, this guy does not deserve that mug shot. He does not deserve it. 20, uh, 28 year old Raymond Rachel was the, at the front desk when 37 year old Jason Robbie came back to rush him after racial slurs were hurled, okay? All right, Robbie was drunk and had been spewing racial slurs. So the hotel clerk, that gentleman, the hero, Exercise his right to deny this man further service at the hotel. And then the criminal decides to come back and attack the hotel clerk. The hotel clerk was able to subdue him, right? According to NBC6 South Florida, the newly released body cam shows officers responding before the brawl when the employee and guest were already in a dispute. The clerk, the hotel clerk, had told officers that Robbie was making comments about MLK Day. Another body camera video shows the officer's perspective walking up to the hotel clerk already holding down the guest. The hotel clerk backs up as police walk in, right? He says to them to not let the guest leave, but the officer is seen focusing his attention on the hotel employee and begins to arrest him, even though Robbie, the racist person in this narrative, had already been told to leave the premises. The hotel clerk then tries to explain his side of the story in the car before he was booked. As we reported last week, the police ultimately escorted the intoxicated racist man to his friend's house, right? Um, The hotel clerk was taken to the county jail and the police gave the racist guest who still seem to be drunk, a courtesy ride to a friend's house. All right, let's put up a picture. That's Robbie. Uh, Robbie was eventually arrested and charged for trespassing and making a racial allegation against the hotel clerk. According to comments made to NBC News, Robbie said the incident was quote, just a lack of customer service and the guy was very rude, you know? So that led to some other stuff, okay? Robbie also added uh, that he is actually literally the most non-racist person you know, okay? He's just, he wants you to know 
He is the most non-racist person, the most. In the arrest report, it was stated that Jason could not recollect the specific facts of the case, talking about the popo. All right, didn't really know what happened here. The details are fuzzy. What did my police report say again? That's what I said. What the video show? I can't remember. I can't remember what I wrote, can't remember what happened. Okay, you know, we have laws on the books. Writing a false police report is a crime. You see, you don't need new laws, you just got to enforce the ones that already exist. And when they don't charge a cop with violation of oath of office, no matter what other charge they get, if they don't charge them with violation of oath, which is your catch all, they're not serious about prosecuting that cop. And I've told you to look for that code every time. No matter what the cop is charged with, it always can include violation of oath. If you do not see violation of oath of office, they're playing games. It, the fix is in. All right, thoughts, brother. Well, uh, you know, Dave Chappelle did this 20 something years ago. He did a joke. He did a joke about he wouldn't call the cops because his house was a little too nice for the police to believe it was his house. <laughs> right? That was the joke. And this is an example of that. They come in and right away they just assume the black guy, well, he couldn't be the employee. He couldn't have been assaulted. And you know, in, in further video and other video that they showed, even when they did the news story, one of the reporters said, well, how did it start? And it's like, what do you mean, how did it start? You saw the guy <laughs> you saw the rush damn video. behind the counter. <laughs> right. The minute you rush behind a customer service counter, you started the fight. Now, what happened? He started the fight with the wrong guy. And right. like you said, he started a fight with the wrong guy and he got his ass whipped. And, and the police came in and they saw the guy holding him down and they did. You know, unfortunately, I, I listen, this is what black people know. This is what happens. You call the cops, you're like, you're taking a chance. It, it's unfortunate, yeah. but this is an example when they always say that you exaggerate, it's not true, this or that. And like you said, they're doing an investigation. An investigation of what? Of what we just saw? The cops rushed in, a, a, arrested the wrong guy. Who knows what that other person was saying, but that person, they're saying there's no witness or anything involved. We saw there was another person involved. And then they give the, the, the racist guy, the drunk racist guy arrived to his friend's house. The police have never given a black person a courtesy ride to their friend's house from the scene of any crime or disturbance. Okay, that that doesn't happen. As far as him being the most le the least racist person in the world, wasn't that Donald Trump? Didn't Donald Trump tell us he was <laughs> the like right. the least racist There's person some in the world? Here. Well, which one? Yeah, which there's one? a real competition they, here. Well, one of you is one of you is lying. Somebody well, lied, damn I mean, it. Listen, unfortunately, I can joke about this. We know what's going to happen, yeah. Rashad. That police department is going to pay the 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 man who was arrested. Um, I forgot his name. I'm sorry, but they're going to pay the settlement Rachel. to him, yeah. Rashad, and it's going to go away. Even if this cop gets fired by the Fort Lauderdale Police Department, he'll get hired by the police department from the city next door. So yeah. he doesn't even have to move. You know, we, we've seen this over and over, and unfortunately, it's not going to be any different. You know, it, I've heard this over and over, and I think it might be the way to get these and you know these bad cops off. If the police, rather than the cities paying these million dollar settlements, the police uh, retirement fund has to pay them. If it came out of their own pocket, they might be a little more anxious to get rid of the bad cops on all of these police forces. Something has to be done, and and again, it, it's unfortunate that you know Dave did the joke 20 years ago. Yet you could do it tonight, and it would still be accurate, right? You yep. can't call the cops because you know I can't call the cops because I work here, but they might not see me behind the counter. I I, I don't know. I, I it's a shame. It's a shame. Yeah, and it it's amazing to me that when settlements are paid because of corrupt cops, negligent cops. Aggressive cops who violate the rights of citizens. When a city has to pay a settlement to a citizen because of cop behavior, that's defunding the police. That's defunding your city. That's defunding the taxpayer base of that local community. If you want to stop defunding the police, if that's really your goal, you need to make sure you hire better cops. Second, make sure every cop must carry their own malpractice insurance. And if they cannot get it, they cannot get hired. 
okay? Uh, professionals in various trusted industries must carry insurance, medical doctors, psychiatrists, etc. And if they can't get it, guess what? They can't work at that hospital. All right, we got more on the other side. Welcome back. Okay, let me read some of the updates. Do not forget every day the watch list. Make sure you tune in, subscribe to the watch list with JR Jackson on youtube.com forward slash watch list TYT. Follow and like on facebook.com forward slash watch list TYT. Weekdays live, 12 p.m. Eastern Time, 9 a.m. Pacific Time. Find out the stories you should be paying attention to in news, politics, culture, current events, sports, and more. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish a Karen would. You want to call the police on them for having a barbecue on a and Sunday? You're going to feel free. Back off! I'm going to tell there's an African American man threatening my life. She fired herself. It probably didn't make sense for Rosa either. It probably didn't make sense. Oh, 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 o
you don't have to worry about your mask because you're gonna drive everywhere you go <laughs> forever, forever. And, and it's a federal crime, you're on an airplane. They need to take this more seriously. They, they don't take these things serious enough. Yeah. I got something for everybody. Double dose. You want to call the police on them for having a barbecue on a and Sunday? You feel free. Back off. I'm going to tell them there's an African American man threatening my life. Uh, hey, what are you? Just what are you? What are you? What are you saying right now? I said right now. Why are you so Let me get out of my car yeah, because you, know, you would on. never see like a person like this. <laughs> I'm not Mexican, I'm Armenian, darling. You feel like you work for me. Always. The Ravazwa. Between houses or cut some grass. That's what you do the best. More? You need yes, more? Tell me more. Uh, do some, uh, do some uh, hot dogs. Okay, what else what I do as a Mexican? What else? As a Mexican? We don't ask for a welfare, we don't ask for welfare. As a Mexican, we work, we don't ask for welfare. You know, the Africans have a concept in their greeting. And their greeting in various dialects says, the humanity in me recognizes the humanity in you, okay? That's codified inside of various greetings on that beautiful continent known as the motherland. It's a reminder that regardless of status, financial prowess, educational attainment, we are valuable. Along the way, that lesson has been replaced by proximity and status, things that really should not determine the worth of a whole human being. But we're seeing these things more and more and it boils my blood. Because all of us are valuable, everybody is worthy. One of the greatest pieces of advice I've ever received, it was simple. You're enough, you are enough. Greatest pieces of, piece of advice. And to the people who are on the receiving end of this woman, I want to say that to you. That the humanity in me recognizes the humanity in you, and you are enough. All right, Alonzo, thoughts on this? Well, thank you for what you said. That that is beautiful and profound, um, and much deeper than I'm going to go. Okay, <laughs> Just, <laughs> because the racists are are idiots, right? Racists are dumb. And and what's really funny is this Armenian woman. It's like you're an immigrant. Do you understand you're an immigrant, like a real true American racist? I'm talking flag flying, pickup truck driving, good old boy racist would destroy you for having an accent. You don't get to be a racist, you're an immigrant. The, the person on the receiving end, I'm assuming Latin uh, descent, Mexican or whatever country might be, they took the high road. They were like, keep talking, you're an idiot, keep, yeah. keep moving how dumb you are, how closed minded you are, etc. And I've said this, I've, I've talked about this in my act for years. The, the, the shame of it, the ridiculousness of it in attacking the Latin immigrants, whether they be Mexican or, or Central American or whatever is, they're doing the same as every other immigrant group has done in America. They're just 100 years late, mm. right? 100 years ago, it was Italian or Irish or whatever you were. You worked menial jobs, you were insulted, you this, that, the other, and you worked your way up. And they, they are doing the same thing now, they're just, just 100 years late. No, this Armenian woman is an embarrassment to Armenian people. She's an embarrassment to immigrants and you don't get to come here and have an accent and be first generation immigrant and act racist towards someone who actually, if the Mexicans wanted to play that card, listen, 
We're living in their country, okay? California, <laughs> you know, La Cienega, San Pedro. Like you, listen, look at our names. Who did this belong to? <laughs> yeah. We got more on the other side. It's indisputable. Stick and stay. Welcome back. We got a lot of show left. Let me read. I got time for one comment. That's how behind I am. Uh, Gucci Mane. She thinks she Kim K with her discount colored card. Whoa. I mean, man. It's kind of low there. All right. Here's an update. Do you remember the young black male, the family man who had swapped, rushed into his house? He was not the target of the investigation. They had the wrong home. They go into the house. He thinks they are robbing the place, trying to commit a burglary. So he starts shooting his gun. Nobody's injured. Once he realizes it's the police, he says, I am sorry, puts down his weapon. They then decide to arrest him for attempted murder of a cop, okay? And they drop his baby. I mean, I'm not making this up, this is what, this is what happened. They dropped his child and then covered that up. We got an update to the story, the district attorney has decided to drop attempted murder charges against this man. Uh, let's put up the family photo. Beautiful family, okay? Charges have been dropped against Corey Marino. In an update on a story we covered, a black father will not face charges after he fired a shot at police officers that he mistook for intruders in his Florida home. That's according to the prosecutor. The Office of the State Attorney for the First Judicial Circuit of Florida announced last month that attempted murder charges brought against Corey Marino had been dropped. Let me give you some background because this man lost some things in this process. The road to restoration was not easy and we were on top of this from day one. We called for these charges to be dropped on day one and many of you provided the legs that this story needed, okay? The road to restoration could be a rough and bumpy one for Marino, who was placed on paid administrative leave by his employers, Navy Federal Credit Union, after he was arrested for the attempted murder of a police officer. According to news reports, Marino's family and attorney said he was later fired. The family described Marino as a licensed gun owner with no felony on his record, okay? He got fired over this incident. He did nothing wrong. The police did not have to charge him, but they decided to anyway. And then they charged him with attempted murder on a cop. Facts be damned. Let's just make up a false police report and say he tried to kill police officers. Uh, let me remind you of the incident. This happened 5 a.m. February 3rd. Marino fired one shot at a SWAT team member that entered his home, prompting a detective to return fire at Marino. No one was injured by the gunfire. Marino surrendered quickly and told officers he was sorry, but he was arrested for the attempted murder of a police officer, according to the news outlet. All right. Now, uh, this is part of the reason why people don't like the police. This was a very simple thing. Remember, police officers are detectives, okay? They're supposed to be investigators. So you mean to tell me that we can figure this out, but you can't. That we understood what should have happened on day one, it took you all months to get around to this. An innocent individual has now lost his job has had his reputation tarnished and he was actually friendly to you all. This is a law abiding citizen, a mentor in his community and this happened to him. He was likely a person on your side, so to speak. You see, cops are creating the enemies against themselves. All right, let's put up the picture of the baby that the police dropped. Now this is just, 
During the incident, right? SWAT comes in, they damn near kill Mr. Marino. He's not the guy they're looking for. There's a one year old kid, that's the kid. The police decided to place the kid, right, in a patrol vehicle. The kid was severely injured after he fell out the car when an officer opened the door. The cops then tried to cover it up. The family has announced its plans to sue the Pensacola Police Department. They engaged in a systematic cover up, not only of Mr. Marino, but his one year old child. This is why we have to start thinking replacement of cops and not just reform. Alonzo, thoughts? There is, there is so much to unpack with this. First of all, let's thank God he's alive. Yeah. Okay, because you pulled a gun with the police there and they could have so easily opened fire on well, him. Well, they, they did. Know? They tried to kill him, they just I missed. Mean, yeah, that's what I mean. I mean, killed, you know, shot him. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is, and this is the, the hypocritical people, where are all those NRA type people who talk about, you know, mm, a good yep. guy with a gun and protecting your home and all of that? Because that's what he did, right? He did exactly what they yell about all the time. He tried to protect his home with his gun. That That's what they claim you should do. But obviously that doesn't apply to him because they're not getting involved in this. And again, and this this is just like the other story we we're talking about, right? Gross police misconduct, ridiculous police misconduct, attempted cover up, uh, hurting a baby. It's going to be a giant settlement paid by the city, and no penalty to these cops that did it. That's that's what happens in all of these cases. They're going to pay him a settlement, and and hopefully it covers his loss of income from. Losing his job, et cetera, et cetera. And you, you can't put a price on hurting a one year old baby, but they're going to. And, and then they'll move on business as usual. And until this somehow hurts the police and the police departments involved financially, make them pay this. Like you, you were saying earlier, you have to have malpractice insurance. You, you know, if a doctor makes this mistake, he's, it's going to cost him personally. And and his malpractice might say you can't. We're not covering you anymore. We have to come up with some accountability and responsibility to these police departments. Yeah, and you have to look at the laws and how laws have been created to protect one department or the industry of policing. It doesn't make sense what we have allowed to happen with policing in America. Qualified immunity was passed so that cops could have an immunity, could have protection when they decided to bash the head of a black person in during the civil rights movement. They wanted to be able to protect their homes, to protect their families, to protect income. And so this qualified immunity mess was something proposed as a way to protect them from prosecutions that may happen criminally or civilly. So that's the root of it, the root of it is racist and still is, it still is. You have not and alleviated the DNA of why this whole qualified immunity was created in the first place. Here's another thing I don't, I just don't get. In the age of GPS, how do they keep ending up in the wrong place? How come, come on, man. You know, <laughs> how come Siri can take me where I gotta go and you're a police department and you end up at the wrong house? What? <laughs> You the whole damn police, <laughs> right? And you keep going inside of the wrong person's apartment, the wrong person's home, and you got guns blazing, ready to kill somebody, and you're the police. Like that alone should be enough for a community to say, no, nope, y'all got to get the hell up out of here. Y'all gotta go. We can't back the blue cause when y'all run it up in random people's houses that have nothing to do with the case. You know why you shouldn't back that? Pro police community, because that means they can run into your house. It's random. They got the wrong person. You can be the wrong person one day. All right, to my live linear television audience. Yes, we are continuing on streaming. Always a pleasure. Take care of yourself, take care of each other, take care of the planet. Remember the truth is always indisputable.